Well, we're now being joined on News at 10 by retired Major General Cecil Sakaiwe, who's a security consultant, to take a look at the security situation in the country and some of the efforts being made to address the problem. Glad you could join us. Good evening. Let's start from that unfortunate, sad incident in Oyo State, where two persons, including a security operative, uh, lost their lives in the bid to rescue a kidnapped victim. I mean, what do you think, you know, why do you think it appears that these crimes have persisted in spite of some of the measures that have been taken to overcome them? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, like we always said, we should not start to trip the symptoms of this criminality, but we should look at the main causes of this criminality. And I think some here before, I have come out to say that there are three causative factors that we must consider if we have to address this thing holistically. First of all, you have to look at the effect of drugs and, you know, the totality of what happened to these people that are taking these drugs that precipitate their actions, that lost their reasoning and they take loss into their hands without fear of repercussion. Two, you have to look at the proliferation of arms, you know, small arms and light weapons, which are these agents of uh, death. Three, you know, the lack of governance in some of these areas has also precipitated this crisis. Unfortunately, the police that is the lead agency in international security operations are not well funded. You know, they have a lot of limitations, you know, in the you know, execution of their task. So we must address this holistically, and it's time for conversation. It's now. Equip the police, give them what it takes to do their jobs, so that at the end of the day, there will be you know, a positive effect in all the operations that they carry out. At the end of the day, the citizen will be able to sleep with their eyes closed, that something is being done for their protection. You would agree that perhaps assisting the police is also the Nigerian army. We've seen security agencies, particularly the Nigerian army, come up with different code names for some of the operations like Python Dance, Operation Crocodile Smile, Puff Adder, the latest Operation Catch Race. I mean, um, they're saying that is targeted at kidnappers. Are you convinced that these strategies are working? I mean, is there any difference between the mode of operations or is it just name changing? It's not name changing. Uh, the Nigeria Army uh, has come in to assist uh, you know, the civil authority under the platform of Section 217, uh, Subsection C of the Nigeria Constitution 1999 as amended. So they have come in to assist the civil police and uh, to restore law and order. This is very clear. But the essential missing link is that there must be interagency cooperation to know that at the end of the day, we are working together towards the same goal. The army cannot work in isolation. The army needs support. Even everybody has to support the military and the police in the execution of this task. Because security is everybody's business. And that's why the popular axiom that when you say something, you say something. And let's not forget the help that the vigilante services are also rendering, uh, like the case in Oyo. Many government officials have ascribed some of these crimes on cross-border activities. Uh, in fact, the CBN governor went as far as saying that if the borders remain closed for two years, the nation will be rid of challenges like kidnapping, insurgency, banditry, and so on. I mean, do you agree with these arguments? Well, I do not know the empirical evidence to support that. All I know is that uh, when there is lack of governance in uh, these uh, territories, what you have to do is, you know, have to look at how to check the manners that follow. That is why, you know, in the counter-terrorist strategies, they also stress that the first principle or the pillar number one is to prevent the factors that make these things happen. Two, there will be capacity building for people to be able to arrest this. And three, there must be a balance between military necessity and fundamental human rights. You know, closing the borders, economic angle, I will understand. But to say that it's, you know, uh, it's one size fits all for security calculations, I think it's a suspect. You must have to do what you have to do to put your ass together to check the security menace in totality. All right, retired Major General Sakaibe, we'd like to appreciate your time for joining us on the News at 10.